So let's move on until let's move on to Nuggets Clippers. I've already made a move here, and again, a lot of this depends on which team dictates pace. But let's talk Nuggets Clippers right now and see what we are dealing with. And I can't wait for this series. It's going to be a lot of fun. I love every series the Clippers are in. They're a fun, fun team to watch. This total opened up at 223. It's up to 223 and a half in some books, still 223 in others. There has not been a big move. Bet365 opened up the Clippers at minus eight. Now they're minus eight and a half. The pace of the Nuggets in the eight seeding games was 97.5 possessions a game. They went into the playoffs and drastically slowed it down. Slowest pace of any team, 92.83 possessions a game. Clippers were at 100.32 possessions in the eight seeding games. That was far slower than they were in uh, pre-COVID NBA. And then they increased their, p their pace slightly in the series against Dallas. Slightly. 102.55. And Dallas likes to play at a fast pace. I thought, thought it was very, very interesting that the Clippers' pace only slightly increased. So now we have a Denver team that's exhausted. You have to think that Malone's going to play the bench in a spot like this after becoming the 12th team in NBA history to come back from a 3-1 hole. They also have Gary Harris, who's extremely important to their basketball team, but he hits bricks. He shoots bricks. Guys, a bricklayer. That, again, I think slows down the offense. And then Leonard is spectacular. He was incredible in the last game, last series. Paul George did not step up. Leonard did. 32.8 points a game, 10.2 boards, 5.2 assists, shot 53.8% from the floor, but just 29.4% from three, which is something we should watch. Patrick Beverly is expected to be back. Again, I expect that to slow down. The pace. With that all being said, I love 223 and a half. I'm not afraid to make a move on that. Under 223 and a half. David Martin says over deadbolt. Now, again, judging by pace, I'm going to catch this. Judging by the way I expect this game to bang out, I'm going to catch this. Nuggets, Clippers, Babano, we have Speak Your Mind Sports Talk. Great NBA capper says, Nuggets on the points is a play. I actually think the dogs win here, Jimmy. Got feeling. A Viper MB leaning to the over. Take it away, Babano. Nuggets, Clippers. Yeah, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, and it's always, you know, which side of the fence are you on? Does Denver ride the wave of momentum and energy and emotion after a thrilling Game 7 win against Utah and coming back from 3-1 down in that series and just ride the adrenaline wave into Game 1? Here tonight against the Clippers, or they hit a physical, mental, and emotional wall in this game. There's a lot of people that think the latter, that they're going to hit that wall uh, because this opened Clippers six. It's up to nine. There's been a three-point move toward the Clippers. I actually jumped on L.A. at seven and a half, and I didn't even get the best number, and it actually went up further after that. So I'm actually kind of content that I got it at minus seven and a half, uh, even though I missed out on the initial opener with the Clippers. I just have a really, really tough time believing Denver's in a good spot here. I mean, that was just a thrilling comeback. They were down 3-1 in the series, left for dead. They exerted a ton of energy, played heavy, big minutes, you know, minutes that put strain on you, especially a guy like Jamal Murray, who had to be a beast in Game 5, who had to be a beast in Game 6, has to come back in Game 7, and he didn't even – and he looked a little fatigued then in Game 7. And thankfully, he has teammates like Nikola Jokic, who was just absolutely brilliant in Game 7, 30 points, 14 rebounds. Just an outstanding performance from him, and they needed that because Murray didn't have his A game. And then I see on S on Sports Center with SVP Scott Van Pelt after the game, the interview with Jamal Murray, and he broke the news to them: "You're playing 48 hours from now, Game One." And he, his reaction was priceless. You know, we're we're playing Thursday. We don't have two full days off. Man, that's a bummer. That's not a bet on quote for me. I don't want to hear that out of Jamal Murray going into Game One uh, of this series against the LA Clippers. That's almost like a tell. Right there, that we're we're gassed, we're we're exhausted after that Utah series, and now you're going to be facing a team that defends probably three flights of stairs at better than the Utah Jazz do. Yeah, it's a tricky spot. I, I could see laying the points, but I'm concerned now at nine. Like nine's a steep number. I understand the situationals are really in the Clippers' favor potentially tonight, but it has really gone up. To nine now, we're at a point. It's at the current number now where I'm 
a little bit hesitant to lay nine in this game. What I do like about the Clippers, Jimmy, is game five against Dallas, game six against Dallas, that was Clipper defense coming back again. They played a lot better. Fourth quarter with the game on the line in game six, they shut down the Mavericks. They got stop after stop. They neutralized Luka. They held the Mavericks for the first time in that series to to under 100 points uh, in that game six win. And guess who's back? Patrick Beverly tonight for game one for the L.A. Clippers, who is arguably one of, if not their best defender, to be honest. He's that good at the defensive end of the court. He gets right up in your grill, in your face, contests shots, doesn't give you an inch of room uh, most times. He's back from the calf injury tonight for game one. Yeah, this is just bad spot all around, I think, for Denver. I laid seven and a half. I would still lean Clippers at minus nine, but I am worried that number's getting pretty high. And I remember game one against Dallas where – Clippers didn't play that well, and they barely covered, and that was minus six in that game against Dallas in game one. But I, I can't take Denver. I just think there's a brutal spot for them. Minus nine, I'd still lean Clippers. Totals-wise, I'm off this game. Small play on the Clippers, but this is not, not a game I have a super strong opinion on. I'm going to have a small Clipper bet, and I'm going to see how this game plays out and maybe come back with something stronger in game two. I was very successful this year on backing the – tired team on the second half of a back-to-back in the first quarter. So I'm certainly not sitting here thinking this exhausted Nuggets team is going to look bad right off the start. If anybody could look bad in the first quarter, it's the Clippers who have been off longer to me. Now, the difference is we're in the bubble. So it's not like the Clippers went out and were partying for a few days. And that will keep them sharper. There's no doubt in my mind that will keep them sharper. And that has changed handicapping, knowing that these guys aren't out in the strip club. They're out partying. They're not out in the clubs. So that leads me to believe that Clippers will be more focused than they might be if it was a regular world out there. So uh, I'm on the Clippers Nuggets under, and I like it a lot. It's maybe I, I'm, I'm confident in the play. It's certainly not my best bet of the day because it's a game one of a series, and we have so much to learn about how they're going to play each other. Uh, Dennis Garcia says that Denver slows down the game under. If LA Clippers blow an exhausted Denver team, have to lean under. Exactly. Exactly. And just judging by the way the Nuggets have been playing, they're going to slow down the pace. They pace 92.83 possessions a game. There was only one team in the regular season that was under that and barely, and that's the Charlotte Hornets. Remember how slow they played. So then you have to ask yourself with the pace that Denver played at in the Utah series, why was that series five and two to the over uh, in seven games? And why has Denver been this, what, 13 and two to the over team in the bubble? And here's why. Utah played very fast. Quinn Snyder said it before that series. We're, we're speeding it up. We're playing at a faster tempo. That's one factor. Second factor is both teams shot ridiculous from three-point range uh, in that Denver-Utah series. Third factor is both teams in that series – went through extended parts of that series not playing a lick of defense. You know, not playing any sort of defense. Denver was terrible defensively early in that series. Utah's defense disappeared for extended times in that series. That's how you got that 5-2 and two over uh, in that series because of those three factors. Utah played faster even though Denver didn't. Both teams shot the lights out from the, beyond the arc. And both teams struggled to play consistent defensively at that end of the floor. And that's how you ended up 5-2 and two over. But you're right, the pace numbers for Denver should are indicative. Don't, don't, don't align with this 13-2 and two over run that they've had since uh, the plate resumed in Orlando. It's kind of weird. Well, it was something that Intex, when he was destroying the totals, talked about in our chat. These guys are in the bubble, and they're practicing, practicing and practicing. And all of the shooting percentages went up. So what we saw happen was the pace slowed down compared to what was happening prior to COVID, but the scores went up. So very, very interesting stuff. Babano, great, great breakdown. I'm on the under 223 and a half, and I like it. And, and I'm not going to make a move on a player prop in game one of that series. I'm close to pulling the trigger in this Raptors. And look, I want Lowry to step up badly. I want him to step up badly, and I think he can. I think he can. But I think the player that I have the most confidence in playing a big role is Serge. So I'm going to take over 
Viper MB makes a good point about be careful now laying of nine now that it's gone up by three points for the Clippers in this regard. No travel for Denver. Even though they're exhausted physically, mentally, emotionally after the Utah series, still don't have to travel. You know, they can sleep in the place they're familiar and comfortable with, at least we hope they're comfortable, uh, sleeping for the last month or so uh, and not have to get on a flight, you know, travel, get off the flight, do all that airport nonsense. Maybe that at least somewhat can help Denver's chances tonight. Very important. It's just it's different now. Everything's different. No travel, no going back and forth. Different days. It's, it's, 